aggregate sales and operations planning aggregate sales and operations planning is an aggregate planning process that determines the resource capacity a firm will need to meet its demand over an intermediate time horizon 6 to 12 months in the future within this time frame it is usually not feasible to increase capacity by building new facility or purchasing new equipment however it is feasible to hire or lay off workers increase or reduce the work days add an extra shift or build up and deplete inventory levels the term aggregate is used because the plans are developed for product lines or product families rather than individual products an aggregate operations plan might specify how many bicycles are to be produced but would not identify them by color size tires or types of brakes for services capacity is often limited by space number of airline seats number of hotel rooms time also affects capacity the number of customers who can be served lunch in a restaurant is limited by space and cooking capacity an economic strategy for meeting demand can be attained by either adjusting capacity or managing demand there are two methods for undertaking aggregate sales and operations planning number one is level production the level production strategy sets production at a fixed rate usually to meet average demand and uses inventory to absorb variations in demand during periods of low demand overproduction is stored as inventory to be depleted in periods of high demand the cost of this strategy is the cost of holding inventory including the cost of obsolete or perishable items that may have to be discarded number two is chase demand the chase demand strategy matches the production plan to the demand pattern and absorbs variation in demand by hiring and firing workers during low demand production is cut back and workers are laid off during high demands production is increased and additional workers are hired the cost of this strategy is the cost of hiring and firing workers let us now look at a problem and try to understand how level production and chase demand methods are applied in the problem here sales forecast for four quarters are given for spring the sales forecast is 80,000 for summer it is 50,000 for fall it is 120,000 and for winter it is 150,000 the other information given with the problem are hiring cost is 100 per worker firing cost is 500 per worker inventory carrying cost is 0.50 per unit per quarter regular production cost is 2 per unit production per employee is 1000 units per quarter and beginning workforce is 100 worker we notice that firing cost is higher than hiring cost that is because of the fact that there is an additional cost to equip the worker for the job like training etc that cost is included in the firing cost for level production as the name suggests we are going to produce a standard quantity during the whole years or every quarter that standard quantity is obtained by taking the average of the demand forecast for each quarter thus we get 100,000 units as the average quarterly demand as shown in the calculation number of workers needed to produce this quantity is obtained by dividing the average quarterly demand by the production rate per worker that is 100,000 divided by 1,000 which is the production rate given in the problem thus we get number of worker required as 100 which is same as the beginning workforce given in the problem in case it is higher or lower than the beginning workforce then we may have to hire or fire worker as the situation demands now we prepare a table as shown here for the first quarter that is spring the demand forecast is 80,000 but we are producing 100,000 units this results in an inventory of 20,000 units 
For summer, the demand forecast is 50,000. We produced 100,000 units plus the additional 20,000 units of inventory, we have 120,000 in hand. This results in an inventory of 70,000 units. For next quarter, that is fall, the demand is 120,000 and the production is 100,000 plus the inventory 70,000. Thus, we are left with an inventory of 50,000. And in the last quarter, the demand is 150,000. We are producing 100,000 plus the inventory of 50,000. Thus, whole amount is consumed during this quarter and no inventory is left. Now we calculate the total cost of production, which is regular production quantity multiplied by cost of production plus total inventory carried multiplied by inventory carrying cost. And in this case, it is 400,000 multiplied by 2 plus 140,000 multiplied by 0 0.50. The production cost and inventory carrying cost is provided in the problem. Thus we get the total cost as 870,000. For chase production, as the name suggests, we are going to chase the demand, and produce items according to the demand. And that will be done through hiring and firing of workers and changing the production. Now, we prepare a table as shown here. For the first quarter, that is, spring, the demand forecast is 80,000. So, we produce exactly 80,000 units. We calculate the number of workers needed to product 80,000 units, that is obtained by production divided by production capacity per worker. Production per worker is 1,000 units, which is given in the problem. So for producing 80,000 units, we need 80,000 divided by 1,000, that is 80 worker. We have beginning workforce of 100 worker, thus, we fire 20 workers. In the case of summer quarter, we need 50,000 units, that is 50 workers. But we have 80 workers after spring quarter, so we fire another 30 workers. In the fall quarter, the demand is 120,000, so we need 120 workers. But we have only 50 workers, so we hire additional 70 workers. Similarly in winter quarter, the demand is 150,000 units, and we need 150 workers. We have 120 workers and so we hire another 30 workers. In summary, total production was 400,000 units in the four quarters. Total workers hired is 100 workers. And total workers fired is 50 workers. Now, we calculate the cost which is regular production multiplied by production cost plus hiring cost plus firing cost. Hiring cost and firing cost is already given in the problem. So we get, 400,000 multiplied by 2, which is the production cost per unit, plus the 100 multiplied by 100, which is hiring cost per worker plus 50 multiplied by 500, which is the firing cost per worker. Thus we get, 835,000 as the total cost of production. As we compare the total cost of production we find that level production cost was 870,000 and chase production is 835,000. Hence, for this aggregate production, chase production method is more suitable.